Pre changing, we had um, a system of using bowls and water and dry wipes, and often um, we asked patients the two or the patients' relatives to bring in um, soap or washing products, but often that wasn't possible, so we were using a lot of um, the hospital soap. Um, which were small bars that weren't particularly great for the skin. So we were using that sort of um, system for patients that needed to be bed bathed. So we decided that we had a bit of an issue when um, we saw that infection prevention had sent out a um, memo to say that the water used in the bowls to wash the patient was no longer able to be put down the sinks within the bays. So we have a lot of six bedded bays in our wards um, and the nurses were now having to carry that water following a wash down the corridor to the sluice um, and that was not only quite difficult but also very time consuming. Um, so we decided to look at maybe adopting a different um, approach and what we did then was we went forward um, as part of the tissue viability team to look at um, how long it actually took to wash a patient. So we took a, a bay on the one of our elderly care wards and we washed went in, two of us went in, we washed each of those patients using soap and water um, with the old method. And then actually what we did then is we brought in um, some wipes and we then washed those same patients the next day using the wipes. And we found when we were doing this that we actually saved over 32 minutes of nursing time just washing those patients because you didn't have to go and collect all the stuff together and, and walk down the corridor, etc. So that's how we sort of came about needing to change, not only from an infection prevention point of view, but also um, from the fact that we were getting an awful lot of moisture damage and skin damage and skin drying in the hospital. And we thought that this was potentially due to the um, soap that was being used, as well as um, the dry wipes and the towels that were being used within the trust. Yes, I faced an awful lot of challenges when we looked at waterless bathing. The first one actually was from myself and the team. So we weren't 100% convinced that it was going to be the right thing for our patients. We knew that it was going to be easier for the nursing staff, um, but we wanted to check out and make sure um, ourselves that we were confident that it was going to be best for the patients in the long run. Um, we took it to um, a couple of meetings and threw it out there and said to different people um, and we got an awful lot of resistance. We got a lot of people discussing um, festival washes um, and people thought that the washing was going to be um, quite difficult, that the patients wouldn't like it, that we'd get a lot of complaints from the relatives to say that the patients weren't being washed properly. Um, so we had we had a lot of negativity around it and I think a lot of that was to do with the fact that they were thinking that we were just using um, wipes, uh, sort of general wipes like baby wipes. Um, so we did face a lot of challenges um, in getting that through. Um, obviously one of the other big challenges was um, financial. So I had to attend the meetings within the trust to um, identify that it was um, not going to be a cost implication to the trust, that we weren't going to be spending more money by doing this. And actually when we added up everything um, from the bowls and the dry wipes um, and etc, we actually found that we would be cost neutral and then with the nursing time added on the top um, that was saved, actually we would be in slight deficit. So we actually we were going to save a little bit of money doing it this way. Um, we had lots of help and we had lots of um, information provided by the company. 
So we chose a range of wipes that covered all of our needs. So with our waterless bathing, this is for patients that are um, bed bound or need to have a bed bath. So obviously with patients that can still get up and go to the shower or go and wash themselves, we don't necessarily use the wipes. Um, but what we did find is that we had the range with the bed bath wipes for the majority of patients. Also, we had um, a set of wipes that were for bed bathing, but also these contained um, the chlorhexidine um, at the right level to enable them to be used for the MRSA decontamination protocol for patients that were coming into hospital as well. And this was really important to us. Um, we needed to ensure that if we were if we were introducing this, that we didn't have some patients that were being washed and with water and some patients that weren't. So we introduced the bed bath wipes, which were for um, all patients that were bed bound. Um, we introduced the chlorhexidine wipes for the patients that needed that MRSA decontamination. And actually what we did find during this time and with information um, from the company um, and our infection control team was that we were actually decontaminating and using the Hibby scrub and other um, types of chlorhexidine incorrectly. So a lot of the ward staff were using it added to the water to wash the patient and actually it needed to have been applied directly to the skin and left for, for a period of time. Um, so we found that with the range we'd got so much information that actually using the bed bath wipes was much better for the decontamination of these patients and also nicer for their skin. So we had lots of information provided. We actually helped design a few um, leaflets that we had to give out to the ward staff. We also had a patient leaflet that we gave out to the patients to explain what the system was and why we were using it. And of course, this was for could be given to relatives as well. Um, and the other thing that we introduced along the way was um, uh, using of the Contiplan wipes. Now these Contiplan wipes are um, for um, episodes and cleaning up in episodes of incontinence and within them they contain a barrier. So we were actually able to um, aid patients being washed really well when they had any episodes of incontinence and they only had one project pro product to be applied at that time. Um, and we found that this was, was a really good for um, the time saved for the nurses, but also for the um, patients, for their privacy and their dignity, and they didn't have to have um, a huge procedure carried out. Um, we, could, we had lots of um, resources available, and if anyone's um, putting it out and starting with this sort of waterless bathing, bathing, I would definitely say get lots of posters, get lots of information to give out to the patients and to give out to the relatives as well as the staff, just so that they are using the products correctly, but also to give them that added confidence that they know why they're using the products and how good the products are. And I have to say the one thing that we did in the implementation was we gave a lot of the people, um, the staff, um, both clinical and in the more senior roles within the trust, packs of the wipes themselves and ask them to go home and use them to wash themselves with. And actually, we had a lot of people coming back saying, OK, now we understand it's not a festival wash. I actually feel really clean and I feel really fresh. So I think um, helping with the staff and allowing the staff time to ask questions and giving them the resources to go away and try it out for themselves was really beneficial. Actually, the one group of people we didn't face any challenges were from patients. We had no challenge at all. We had um, in the original um, little audit, mini audit that we did when we washed the patients with water and then we washed them with the wipes following that, we did um, do a patient feedback form at the same time and the form came back that the patients all really liked it. They thought it was really good. It, they didn't. The some of the feedback was they didn't get as cold. Um, the towels were really rough, so it was really nice not to have to be rubbed down with the towels. 
Um, it was much quicker um, for them as well. So we didn't really get any um, feedback from the patients. The patients all really liked it. And just to be um, play devil's advocate a little bit, what we then did was we took the wipes um, to before the implementation actually came out. We took the wipes to um, several wards from each of the different care groups and gave them some wipes and said, give them to your most difficult of patients and ask them how they feel. So we gave a lot of wipes out and even then we didn't have any negative comments. So patients have had nothing but good things to say about the new system. So we decided not to do it like that. We decided to do it um, as a whole. So we actually went over um, and changed the whole trust over to this system um, within the same week. So we put out lots of information for the two weeks building up to it. There were lots of opportunities for um, staff to ask questions. We had um, assistance from the company who went around the wards um, and um, took around the wipes, allowed the staff to ask questions about the different wipes, see the posters, ask questions about it. Um, we um, enabled everybody to um, have an ample opportunity to use them themselves, to try them out. Um, and then we said that from a certain date, we were going to swap over. So we worked very closely as well with the materials management department because obviously we didn't want to have an awful lot of stock in um, and then try to, to change over the stock. So we worked with them and we launched it across the whole trust on a, on a certain day. Um, when I say that, we do have to remember that this is not every patient in the trust. Um, it's only the patients that need to have a bed bath. And of course, if a patient wanted to um, have a wash with soap and water, then of course we would still continue to do so. So it's not forced upon them. There is still that provision that they are able to ask. But um, I don't hear very often of anybody asking to go back and be washed with the soap and water. I think once they've tried it, they um, have been really happy with it. So I think the majority of the workings out to implement this were brilliant. I think we'd covered a lot of bases. The one base we didn't cover, which I would definitely change again in the future, was the um, backlash from staff uh, about the environment. So we had an awful lot of challenges about um, the environment, how the wipes were um, going to um, cause a lot of environmental pollution. Um, a lot of it, to be honest, was very personal. Um, and I had a lot of direct emails accusing me of um, killing every turtle in the world and and killing off the environment for our grandchildren. Um, so it made me go away and look at the waste. And actually, we found out that we're carbon neutral um, in the fact that we don't put any waste to landfill at all within the trust. And when we actually did investigate deeper, we found that um, we were using a lot less with the wipe with the wet wipes that we were using than we had with the dry wipes that we've been using previously. So um, I think in the future, I would definitely think about the environment and ensuring and reassuring staff that they were not going to have a massive effect on the environment using swapping over to the wipes. Um, apart from that, I think giving all of the information that we did, giving staff an opportunity to um, ask questions, because at the end of the day, if your staff on the wards don't like the idea of, of using um, waterless bathing and using wipes to, to wash the patient, then they're not going to do it. So if you go and confront people and let them ask you the questions and discuss it with them and give them some to trial, it really worked well for us. So apart from the environmental issues that we had, I wouldn't change the way we rolled things out. I don't I don't think there have been any negative effects. I think the only um, real um, 
negative was the environmental um, concerns. We haven't seen um, an increase in cost. We haven't seen that we've spent a lot more money. Um, so no, I don't think there were really any any negatives to, to rolling it out. In fact, I think that we rolled out um, pre-COVID, not that long before COVID, but we did roll out before um, all of the issues that have occurred with COVID. And actually, we've had an awful lot of feedback about how this has made the dealing with um, the COVID patients and the COVID restrictions within the hospital much, much easier. So if you're going in to wash patients and you're going into a bay, for example, that is COVID positive, needing to take everything into that bay to um, wash a patient would have been a lot more difficult than taking in wipes. So I think it's it's actually proven um, to be really good. And a lot of the younger COVID positive patients that were in isolation have actually felt um, that they've used the wipes and they felt that they've been much better for them than trying to, to wash with the bowl of water by the bed. So I, I, I don't think there have been really any negativity about it, more positive. Um, I think I like the um, continence wipes the best. Uh, I think I really like the fact that they contain a barrier product, that they can be used to clean and they're so, so, so soft. Um, we've had a lot of patient feedback um, from people that have got wounding to the sacral area or to the buttocks um, um, and to say that they're so soft, they're so gentle and they cleanse. And quite often if you've got some moisture damage or excoriation and you're being cleansed and then you're applying a separate barrier product, that can be more uncomfortable. So having it all in one is is really great and we've had um, really good feedback from patients with with that in fact we've had a lot of patients asking us if they can purchase these when they go home because they just like them so much um, we um, have used that and we've introduced that with a new moisture damage pathway within the trust and we have seen um, a, a really good uptake of using the wipes um, and I so I think I love all the products, um, but I think that one for me has made uh, the biggest difference to to patients' um, comfort. So I think that's why that one I would probably choose over the others. So it's been a bit difficult to assess the outcomes um, just because we had undertaken um, an audit pre um, the rollout looking at the number of patients, um, a prevalence audit, looking at the number of patients with moisture damage in the trust on a certain day. Um, we'd also taken um, some, given out some feedback um, forms to, to patients as well. Unfortunately, after the rollout, COVID hit, and so the trust, um, the output of the trust and the patient um, acuity etc changed completely so it's been a little bit difficult to assess whether it's had um, a massive impact impact on patient skin because obviously we haven't had the same patient um patient groups that we would normally however saying that i think it has definitely shown that it is really it's a really useful system not having to throw the water away into the sluice, taking it out of the bays, has been, it's been really beneficial for that from an infection prevention point of view. Um, it's been really good for the patient's um, skin and the patient's um, privacy and dignity, really. So um, it's difficult to say um, what benefits that we've seen, but we've definitely got um, a, a, a staff love of them now and in fact as soon as there is any issues with the supply or they don't have any on the ward we are getting numerous phone calls saying where are they we can't use this why, why haven't we got these wipes so they they've become embedded into practice um, and there are very few staff members that we now have to do some um, discussions or some support with to find out what they're um, what they don't like about them. So I think it's it's definitely become very embedded in practice because it's so useful and it's so good for the patients and the patients give such good feedback about it.
So um, we definitely have seen really good patient feedback. I think they really like the fact that they don't have to use the hippie scrub, for example. So one of the biggest um, things that we've noticed is that the patients that needed to come in and do the MRSA um, decontamination needed to have a wash with the um, chlorhexidine um, for five days. Now they use the wipes and then after that five days they would go over to the other wipes, um, to the normal bed bath wipes. And we've had a lot of feedback that the, the wipes are so much nicer than the than the, using the hippie scrub. Um, it's much nicer for their skin. They're not getting the dry skin or the sore um, skin with those wipes. Um, I think that's been a, a real bonus. And in fact, we've had patients asking to use the wipes rather than the hippie scrub and the water that aren't needing a bed bath because they like it. They like it much better. So and it's much easier to use. Um, so I think we've had really good patient support. Um, I haven't personally heard of any patients that have asked specifically to be washed with water. Um, I think when we first rolled it out, patients that had been in for a while, there were a couple that did ask to continue with water. But once they trialled the wipes, they then would convert over to the wipes. So we've, I think it's good from a point of view that it, it saves time with the wash it's not as cold because obviously getting the water at the right temperature and having to change it in between meant that there was a prolonged experience of that procedure of washing the patient um, not having to use the towels which tend to be a little rough on the skin um, and the skin is feeling clean and fresh at the end of it so we've had only had good so far Um, I think, uh, as I've said before, I think it's been really useful from an infection prevention point of view. So where you've had um, staff having to put full PPE on before they go in to um, uh, look after and carry out procedures or personal hygiene with a patient, um, the, the PPE, of course, has been rationed and, and there's been there's been a shortage of that. So not having to take it off and go out and get um, bowls or more water or to dispose of the water has been really useful. So just to being able to take the a pack of wipes into the patient and to help them wash with those wipes has been is has been really great um, from both the PPE, but also for the for the patients themselves who um, have been able to maintain a little bit of um, dignity and a lot of the patients with their breathing difficulties um, got very um, hot and didn't want to have the um, uh, a long dragged out procedure with personal hygiene so I think that's been really useful just giving them the ability to have a quick wash with the wipes feel fresh and clean but not have to to worry about um, having bowls of water etc. I think it would be really good to have um, a bathing product with more moisturiser in it. So the moist, the, the bed bath wipes have um, moisturisers within them, as do the incontinence wipes. Um, but obviously for patients with really dry skin, it would be really great to have a little bit more of a moisturiser within them. Um, but other than that, um, I don't think so. I think to have the product that can bath the patient, can can decontaminate with the MRSA and also wash the patient um, and having the help with the continence are all great. I can't see any other um, any other uses other than potentially having a wipe that was specifically for washing legs um, that have a lot of dry skin. So something to help out when you've got a patient with um, leg ulcers or varicose eczema or things like that, that would be really useful to have a product that was um, really good to use for those sort of patients. I mean, we do tend to use the bed bath wipes a lot with them anyway, um, but something specific would be really useful. Um, it, if you want to implement this, this protocol, what I would say before you start is get your um, get a group together, get everything 
organised and a really robust plan in place to ensure that the implementation is planned and that everybody is on board. Um, I would say ensure you have the support of all the senior nurses within the trust. Um, and I would also say the um, healthcare assistants. They were both the two biggest um, challenges to us, which was good. It was good to be challenged, but to actually go ahead and ensure that you're giving the right information, you're explaining everything correctly, giving a massive opportunity to ask questions and for feedback and then um, actually giving out some of the product to enable people to take it home and try it on themselves because um, I think that for us turned a corner so you know I think we were all um, a little dubious to start with but um, especially uh, I have to say myself and um, some of my senior team because we were ex um, care of the elderly nurses and when I used to wash patients the wetter the bed them meant that you'd done a really good wash so you know a really good soapy bath bowl of water was was always the thing so to actually try the product yourself was really good and to ensure that you give as much information as you can and take advantage of the resources and the knowledge that the company have on the products and what they're used for because that was was really essential because you can't educate and support um, large numbers of staff on your own especially tissue viability nurses so I think it would be really useful to take advantage of whatever um, resources and experience is on hand for you. I think it would be really useful in a lot of nursing homes and residential care and I also think it would be really useful to um, to be used in some patients um, ho own homes if it's very difficult for the family to get the water to the to the patient and again if the skin is um, is dry it would be really useful that the the bed bath wipes are so um, comforting almost on your skin it's they're really nice and they get, leave you feeling very fresh and dry so I can see it be it can see it having a place for certain patients so if people are struggling I think it would be really useful to to look at implementing obviously in a hospital it's um it's a it's much easier to implement a, a change like that however you know there's a lot of papers been written on waterless bathing um, and a lot of the early adoption of this type of method was in nursing homes and residential care so i think in the community it would be just as useful but obviously it's just an, an individual assessment to find out whether um, it's going to be a, a great benefit to people but I, I can't say there'd be any difference in the community than there is in the hospital. If somebody is unable to, to wash themselves, then these, these are a great product to consider. <laughs> 